All right, so we're back over here. Now we left off with these books. We're not quite done with them just yet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this book here, which is the parent. Remember the big one? I'm going to hit H to open up the Select from Scene dialog here. I'm going to expand the book over here. And I'm going to select all of the books that are inside of this one right here. So we get all these books. So we get the parent and all the children. I'm going to hit OK. So we've got all the books selected. I'm also going to control and select the bookshelf right there. And I'm going to isolate selection because we're going to work with these two items right now. I'm going to take the bookshelf here and I'm going to freeze it just so I make sure that I don't accidentally select it or anything like that. Okay. Now I've got a bunch of books over here that are just way too many to fit right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those books and I'm going to place them somewhere else, maybe on this shelf over here on the opposite side. Okay. Now these books over here. Okay, I'm going to say they're placed well. Uh, we've got a little bit of a gap right there, but uh, really that's that's no problem. I'm going to go ahead and leave that gap. No big deal. Over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these books, place them probably against the wall like that. Okay. Now I'm going to maybe take some more books from over here. And I'm going to clone them and bring them over to the other side over here. So the reason I'm doing this is because this allows me to create some random book placement which looks more believable and more realistic. Now right here we have a gap so to fill up this gap here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select uh, maybe maybe this book right here. I'm going to clone it. Kind of place it in the middle there. And I'm going to scale it out. Something like that looks pretty pretty good. Okay, and there we go. That looks pretty good. If I render this out, you see what we've got. It really looks like it's randomized. It looks very natural. It's extremely important for you to create a natural feel when you have lots of objects like this, like random books in the background, because the more random it looks, the more natural it'll feel. And the more natural it feels, uh, the more your viewers are going to buy what you're giving them, what you're feeding them uh, through their eyes. And that's exactly what you want. Okay, so... Now what I need to do is create random books for a lot of these shelves, not all of them. For example, down here we know we've got the picture frames, we've got another object here, the TV's here, the Blu-ray player is going to be over here, and uh, we don't really have anything over here. So maybe over here we can have some uh, DVD movies or something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to start to create uh, random stuff here. So I'm not scripting this, I haven't planned this out, I'm just going to start taking books clone them, clone them, clone them, and randomly place them on these shelves, okay? Now, it's going to take a pretty long time to do this. It's a pretty time-consuming process, but it's worth it because it increases the quality of your work by a lot, by leaps and bounds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and fast-forward the video while I do that. You can just watch me as I do it to get an idea and then try it on your own. So here we go.
One thing that you might notice that, that uh, I'm doing here is I'm using the mirror tool to my advantage. The mirror tool can make you, uh, can allow you to add more random objects to your scene simply by taking an object and mirroring it. So it's a very powerful tool. So if I take these objects here, if someone were to look at this and they had a very keen eye, they might be able to tell that these books look identical to these books over here. But if I mirror those books over there, okay, it can actually throw people off. Unless someone has a super keen eye, no one will really know the difference because now those books over there look different to these. Okay, They look similar, but they don't look exactly the same. You don't want things to look uh, exactly the same when it comes to random stuff like that, like these uh, books. I'm just going to place these books up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue to fast forward through this and just create more randomized books and things like that.
Okay, so I'm going to say that I'm happy with the way that the random books look. Let's go ahead and randomize some of this other stuff too. Let's take this picture frame for example. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to use angle snap, rotate about 15 degrees this way. I'm going to make a clone of it. And this one I'm going to make smaller. So it's going to be something like this and maybe it'll face forward a little bit. I'll make a clone of this one. And maybe this one I'll make uh, extra big. Maybe rotate it this way like so. I'm going to take this one make it a little bit smaller. So we got kind of a small, medium, and large thing going on there. Okay. I'm going to take this guy here. Snap him to one of these vertices over here. And I'm going to place this one... Maybe about right here and let me make sure that it's sitting on top of the surface. So I'm going to place it something like this. Now I'm going to make another one. And this one will face maybe this way. So 
I'm kind of randomizing stuff here. And again, it's really, really important to do this. Now, the DVD case over here needs to be worked on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use the same techniques as I did for the book. I'm basically going to take this guy, clone it a bunch of times. And um, fortunately, DVDs are standard sizes, usually. So we don't have to worry about making DVDs that are uh, bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller, so on and so forth. But what I want to do here to really probably sell the effect a little bit better, let me see about taking the edge loop of this guy. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about this. I was going to chamfer the edges to soften them up, but I'm not really going to worry uh, about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. The reason I'm not worrying about it, by the way, is because Mental Ray, which is the renderer that we'll be using, has... Um, has special shaders that have the ability to bevel things at render time bevel being a synonym for chamfer and if you can do that at render time you don't have to waste time modeling it uh, modeling that detail in right here okay so here's the DVD case so we're gonna pretend like the, this family or whoever lives in this house has a pretty extensive DVD collection here so what I'm gonna do here is let me see I'm gonna move this guy over just a bit, something like that. And then I'm going to make a bunch of copies. Maybe like 12 copies like that. And I probably should have made a lot more copies. If I render that out, you see what we've got. Looks, uh, looks a little bit too uniform though for my taste. And you know how I don't like uniformity. I like things to look uh, kind of random and kind of crazy. So let me take one of these DVD cases and I'm going to turn it over on its side. Like so. Then move it up a bit. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, place it like that so it looks like it's leaning against that. Now I could take this one and place it like this and make a couple of copies. So there's a few here that are kind of leaning like this. And just like what we did with the bookshelf, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unfreeze all. I'm going to select the bookshelf there. And I'm also going to control and select all the DVD cases. And I'm going to isolate the selection right there. Just so it's easier to work. Now I'll take the bookcase here. Or the uh, furniture and I'll freeze it. And I'm going to take a few of these DVD cases. What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to go ahead and rotate them so it looks like there's some of them that are on their sides down here. Just looks a little bit more natural. Now because these are stacked up like this, I don't want it to look perfect. These DVD cases have an excuse for looking very uniform perfect simply because they're all the same size. But these right here, unless uh, we had OCD or something and we sat here trying to place these perfectly, it wouldn't look like this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to random, randomize this up uh, a little bit. So I'm just going to grab these guys and kind of just toss them around, move them around a little bit so they look a little bit more randomized, which will obviously look a lot more natural. And maybe I'll take these guys over here, clone these guys. I'm going to mirror them in the X, bring them over so they look like they're leaning up against the side of the shelf right there. Something like that. And uh, that'll work out, that won't work out too bad. If I really want to get picky about this, maybe I could take this one and place it right there. I'm going to make sure that that placement looks pretty good. I'm going to take this guy and move him so that he's right there. See that? And just to add even more randomization to this, maybe I'll take the one up here. I'm going to take angle snap off and just slightly give that a little bit of rotation like this. And that slight rotation, believe it or not, will make a huge, huge difference on these things. And maybe I'll clone this guy right here. 
and place this one on top. So I think you get the idea. It's the same idea as with the books, with just a few variations, but it's the same practical idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward the video here. Uh, go ahead and, and try it on your own or just follow along and, and watch the techniques that I use. It's the same basic overall technique, uh, except you know, you're just randomizing this thing with your eyes. One other thing that you'll notice is that I'm, I'm mirroring some of these guys to flip them around so we can see the front side because I did model those details in. So it'd be a waste to not rotate these guys and, and show that detail off. So it makes perfect sense to come in here and use the mirror tool and just mirror some of these guys back and forth. So I'll even do that over here. Uh, maybe I'll take one of these in here and mirror it in the Y just so the front part is facing out and that adds even more randomization to this and makes it look uh, that much more realistic so I'll mirror this one in the Y and you can see how if a simple button click we can go ahead and we can just randomize this stuff really really good which adds a, an incredible level of realism here now for these guys in here, just to add more uh, randomization, I'm just going to come in here and just push some of them in, pull some of them out. Make sure that there are no two DVD cases that are sitting side by side that look exactly the same in terms of placement. See that? That's what we want. That randomization adds a whole new level of realism and it's such a simple edit to make and it makes such a huge difference it's like probably the simplest thing that you can do to make your 3d objects and your 3d scenes look that much better so I'm gonna take these guys here and maybe in the X I'll do something like this maybe I'll take uh, one of these guys bring them out over here Rotate it a bit, go to the front view wireframe. Place it right there. And have it just lean against that like so. Maybe take this one. Have it just rest right on top of that. You can clearly see how this type of randomization just makes things look so much better. Okay, so something like that looks good. Alright, so I'm going to say that I'm happy with that. If you'd like to, go ahead and randomize these DVD cases a little bit more. I'm going to leave a few uh, empty shelves. Um, actually, let me see. I, I don't even think there are any empty shelves. Let me un... Uh, exit isolation mode and no actually I didn't end up with any empty shelves except for the two that are up here but that's perfectly fine um, if you want to place more stuff right there that's fine by me go at it have fun I'm gonna say that I'm happy with this okay so last but not least the picture frame on the wall don't want to forget about this one so I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna place it about this height on that wall looks uh, looks pretty good okay I'm gonna clone it and place one maybe here make a couple of clones right there and actually you know what I have an idea here 
I know it's going to look pretty good. I'm going to take this one here, maybe lower it a little bit, place this one on the top left of it like this, and make a couple of copies. So we get sort of that, uh, sort of like a step pyramid type look to that, which looks pretty cool. All right, there's some stuff getting in my way. It's getting very annoying. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these picture frames and the house geometry, the blue stuff, and I'm going to go ahead and isolate selection. There we go. That makes things so much easier. So I'm going to take this one here, clone it. Maybe I'll put some uh, more picture frames over here on the wall on this side. And maybe what I'll do here is, and I'm just going at random here. I'm not planning this stuff out. I'm completely randomizing this stuff. And it's a good thing when you're doing stuff like this to randomize. Simply because, remember to scale as well. Just to make the, uh, add more randomization to this. It's a good thing to randomize stuff like this. So that it looks more believable. More natural. The more natural your scene looks, the more believable it is. And I gotta tell you, it makes an incredible difference. So I'm just continuing here. There we go. So just putting some more uh, pictures, picture frames here. Because this family likes to have a lot of pictures. And um, maybe right here, I'll just put a couple like that. Okay, I'm not going to overdo it. And I'm not very good at... Um, you know, I'm not an interior designer or anything like that. I don't know what looks good with picture frames. So I just kind of randomize the stuff and I let my brain just go on automatic mode for a moment there. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Feel free to go ahead and populate your scene with as many picture frames as you want. Place them however you want. Scale them however you want. And rotate them however you want. I'm going to go with that. As long as you get the idea, that's what's important. Okay. So I'm going to unfreeze all. There we go to unfreeze my uh, shelf right there. Do a quick render of this. That's what we have. Looks uh, looks much more realistic. Very good. I'm going to come in here and just rotate this stuff with angle snap turned off. Just to give this a little bit more randomization. Because nothing is ever really perfect. Okay. So... I'm going to say that I'm uh, I'm happy with this. So I'm go that's going to do it for this video. In the uh, next video, we're going to go ahead and jump into rendering.